Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I know we're a few minutes late in starting, so thanks for bearing with us. Um, but we're so happy to see everybody virtually. Um, we have Aaron Gallagher and Kelsey Rinkar from the coalition here to answer your questions today. Um, Gina is coming. I think she had a little internet trouble. She'll be on in a few minutes. Um, just a few reminders as we still have a few people logging in. Um, this will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel this afternoon, along with any links or attachments that are mentioned. Um, we'll try to post them in the chat. Um, sometimes you'll see those links. Um, if they don't work, don't panic. We'll also post those links um, under our YouTube channel show notes later. Um, if you have a question, please type that in the chat box or the questions box. Um, we usually try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, and so I think with that, Erin and Kelsey, please take it away. Hi, everybody. Happy spring break week. Um, so it looks like people are still coming in. So happy spring break if you have those spring breakers that you're building this week. Um, let's see, sound is not good. Mr. Lark, let us know if you can hear now. Let us know if you've got better sound. Or anyone happy else? After carers, after carers, after care kids. Um, on break this week they're with you all day so make sure we'll just do a sound check anybody else if you want to type in questions and just let us know better all right miss pilar we'll take better great news great news um and for your little ones hopefully they are down for nap because this is our nap time version um so gina's coming so you get chelsea and i we are definitely here to talk about our what is it our opportunities did i get that right our opportunities opportunities so we're here for that uh, we'll go through some brief announcements and updates we're here to answer your questions um so chelsea is there anything you want to put out there sure i did um like to remind everyone as you're finishing up trainings um that are connected to the arpa stipend that you make sure to um, as the director of the program, you're responsible for uploading um, for your teachers on behalf of your teachers. Um, and so those um, funding requests need to be submitted through WebAuthor, um, making sure that you're including the uh, supporting documentation, whether it's connected to training or coaching hours. Um, all of the projects are up and running. And so I know some of you um, you know, within the next couple months, we'll be finalizing your training hours or your coaching hours. So just make sure you maintain that documentation to upload for the stipend. Um, we are, we just processed a lot of funding requests that were, that had been submitted um, for February. And so um, make sure to check your payment summary within the portal. Um, to see those additional um, funding uh, requests that you had made through WebAuthor, those should be posted so you could see who you need to pay out um, through that payment summary. So it would show the amount as well as the person that it's connected to and the email. So Chelsea, what is the final date that they need to have all of their documentation in for ARPA? Just so, because we're we're in spring, so it's it's we're coming to this is our final round of our ARPA. So when is their final date to submit everything in the portal? Um, I know my sound's not good because I forgot. So, um, I'll try to get closer. Is this helpful if I'm closer? Then it's like close up. Yeah. Hi, Gina. Hi. So glad you didn't get see her, but she's here. I'm gonna come slide in on my chair. Come slide in. We may need a headset. Okay. Gina's going to help with the sound problem. And it's coming out sound awful. All right. It's better. Looks like I'm underwater. Hold on. Let me identify a headphone. I'll be back. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to keep talking. Hopefully, my sound is working. Um, and so she won't sound underwater because we want to make sure you can hear everything. So if you have completed training, as Chelsea was saying, 
um, you'll want to go back in the portal and submit all of your documentation so we can go through that process. This is the last year of ARPA. I know we've had um, several wonderful years of ARPA. Please let me know if you can hear me also. Um, but this is the last year. So as you're getting that documentation, you don't have to wait to the very end. This is the last year. You want to go ahead and put your documentation in. Sound is much better. Okay, so sound on my end is good. Perfect. Okay, so we're one for three, so I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to jump while we're working on our sound. You know, this is fun because these are always live. We just never know what's going to happen. I'm coming up on May 4th. Mark your calendars. I'm remembering it because of Star Wars. May the 4th be with you. It's our annual conference. Great, Beverly. Glad to hear it. I'm glad you can hear me. So this is our conference this year. May 4th, 2024 is our um, 2024 Empower Conference. We're so excited. Last year we were packed um, and we're looking forward to seeing you this year. We still have plenty of seats, but definitely we were um, packed to the gills last year, so we want to make sure you get your seats reserved um, for the conference. And registration is live, so you can go to our website. You also see it on our socials, and you can link and sign up for the conference. And I'm going to stop there and let Chelsea do a sound check. Sound check. Sound Much. check. Much better. Much better from my side. Hi, Gina Carello. Yes. Yes, in all caps. Okay. Okay. Pilar's mm. thumbs up much better from Allie. And I'm so glad to have more people because this was going to be the day everybody said I was going to get up and dance just to fill time. You've been saved. You've all been saved. It's coming. One day I am going to dance. You can and still dance, Aaron. I'm a really terrible dancer. Time. So I think the general vote would be a thumbs down. I know my children would definitely vote me a thumbs down on dancing or singing. So you've all been spared. So glad you can you. always sing and dance. I was going to no, come slide. I'm not children who would tell you otherwise. So <laughs> I'll tell you, so, I passed on that. So I can I have, repeat what I was saying since right. most people couldn't hear. Um, you had asked Aaron about the deadline for submissions. Yeah. <clears throat> um, each project has kind of a varying deadline, which has been shared with providers and will continue to share out those deadlines um, with providers. Most of them fall at the end of May some extend to the end of June. So um, we'll continue as, depending on the projects that you're participating in, um, we will give you those reminders, whether you're at end of May or you're in end of June, um, as far as submitting those funding requests goes. Um, but most of them, especially like with the, um, the new hire, you know, they have to have worked that first month in order to receive it. So that's why that one ends um, at the end of May, because they wouldn't have a full month um, to of employment in order to submit um, if they if they start um, pass or if they start employment past May. Um, a lot of the trainings, once your training is done, that's when you want to submit. So if you finish your training hours, then you can submit. And that helps us track how many we're anticipating coming in. Um, there are some trainings that, like class group coaching, um, that are going towards or finishing at the end of June. Um, so we know what to expect for those participants. So. Um, once you have the documentation, I just encourage you to submit and you can keep submitting funding requests as needed. You don't have to wait till you have everything for everyone to submit. You could submit for one teacher now and then once the next teacher that finishes, you can submit for them. So uh, Patty had put a question in about how to add a new hire for the ARPA grant. Um, and that is done through web author. When you go to that add the staff request, there's an area where you add um, over on the right hand side, add the staff, and then you're filling in that information. Um, for the new hire and the 45 hour, they don't have to be in QPS to qualify for those bonuses. Um, and nothing is being imported from QPS into web author. So it's two totally separate 
um, system. So you would have to add them in WebAuthor to then submit that request for them. And the 45 hours is the 45 hours of training plus the exams. And so we need um, the 40 hours of DCF, the five hours of literacy, and then you have to update their, upload their transcript to that. So their DCF transcript for validation on that one. So good, nice. <clears throat> Quiet group today. How's everybody enjoying? We're in spring break mode. You know, That's right? About, so some and the weather's the gorgeous. Like, oh, what a way. Beautiful. I know. There are extra non-napping friends with you. We know if you have school agers, we know that there is no quiet nap time right now. So <laughs> we get it. Get it. We get it. Yeah. Exactly. And Aaron, I heard you mention about um, Empower. So um, registration is open for the Empower conference. Yes. And um, we are using a new com conference app called Whova. Did you share that? Um, so we are using Whova for our conference um, registration and interaction. Um, and we've seen Serena was sharing earlier this morning that there's over a thousand interactions within the Whova Whova app already. Just where you guys are talking to each other, you're asking each other questions, um, which has been great to see those conversations that are focused on, um, you know, how you're supporting your kids, how are you doing self-care, how are you supporting your teachers, so um, just keep that up, and there are uh, prizes um, that will be available during the conference for different um, Whova games and interactions, so just keep that in mind um, that your participation within the app um, could get you some prizes. It is really cool. The activity there is a really cool. Um, I've had a couple different providers message me and just say hello. Um, so it's, it's a great way to message. So very, very cool. Very, very cool. Nice. Um, other things that are going on before then you'll see in the handouts. There is a handout for the Mandel Library. This is for families. Um, there is a date each month where we will be at the library working on um, literacy tips, book sharing, um, lots of great things because it's wonderful to read to little ones, even when they're really quiet. I know I went through that with my own kids thinking, gosh, you're just not talking back. Why is this? Um, so if you want to share that with your families, it's a wonderful resource to give to your families. Um, I know last time we talked about for our VPK students, New World's Reading, um, and then we talked about um, the app. So I'm happy to put information about both of those back in um, the chat so that we make sure that for our VPK families who are eligible, they can receive books um, because that's such an important resource. So we'll, we'll share that again. And then we are, it is, I saw Pilar, yes, midweek grog with you. We're totally with you. Um, I can answer Andrea's question about the right. micro credential. So we um, ho had a special micro micro credential project that just finalized so that funding um, will be coming to you within the next month um, we're determining um, the best way to whether combine those two fundings for both your COP participation and the micro credential or if it's coming separate so um, stay tuned we'll be giving you more information about that soon Um, I can also give an update. We've, um, we have those material grants that are coming out. Um, so those are getting processed um, by our finance team. And um, there are three different um, material packages um, that providers may be eligible for. It's really based on um, the kids that you're serving. So um, for um, our VPK providers, um, you all will be receiving a cozy corner kit. Um, so every provider is receiving the same uh, materials, but each VPK provider will receive a cozy corner kit. And then we have um, the inclusion kit, which is for our school readiness sites um, that are serving children um, 
two years through five years old. So there will be an inclusion kit. And then we also have an infant toddler kit, which is our for our school readiness providers that are serving our infants. Um, so if you are a provider that does all three, then you would be receiving all three kits. Um, so those will be coming out between um, probably I'd say they all be will be delivered to you through the month of April. Um, so just be on the lookout um, for those um, deliveries. And we do have to have proof of delivery. So make sure to um, submit that DocuSign back um, of the proof of delivery to make sure you that you've um, signed off that you've received that kit. You do not have to apply for it. This is based on the contract um, and the kids that you serve, so you don't have to apply for it. Um, we had discussed that process, but knowing that um, we have all your information, we can do a direct ship. That way everyone can be included. Um, that's how we chose to do it, so it, you didn't have to do another application to receive those materials. And it's per site, so you get one kit per site. <clears throat> Wonderful. Um, so Latorsha had put in, she said she has four children, and if all the children are absent on a day um, and they're within the three excused absences, you would be, uh, if she would be reimbursed. And um, if you're open and all the children do call out for that day, then yes, um, the school readiness contract does allow for three absences with no questions asked. So everyone, every school readiness child gets three absences. Um, but if it is over that third one, then the parent would have to write you a note. And I know some providers do um, kind of make that a policy for every absence a note is required just to sort of have that on hand. Um, but if you're open and um, the kids are out, then you would be paid. For, uh, reimbursement may ask you because you're submitting attendance showing that all the children were absent that day, and it may look like perhaps you were closed, but if you can confirm you were open um, and that they were just absent, then it should be payable, Latorsha. But please, if you have any questions, your reimbursement specialist can always help you with those issues. Um, and Andrew was asking about the kits, I think, if she needed to apply and they don't need to apply for those, right? Yeah. And April asked about this. Did you address that? I'm sorry, because I was typing and not listening at the same okay. time. So that's what. It's per site. <clears throat> yeah, per site. And I was waving to Lorca. And I'm in the middle of the room. So it's, you know, it's general chaos for a Wednesday. It's a lot for a Wednesday. <laughs> Bye, Lorca. <laughs> See, we might have guest spots. There might be guest people walking in the background. Um, where yeah. I am, might be short people because my kids are here. So just yeah. what's that? Or, yeah, it's always something, right? It could be my husband getting his lunch. You never know. <laughs> we never know, right? We've we've done this long enough. I think we've had it. <laughs> it's just about everything at this point. It's about everything. So for those of you that, that have hung on for the last three years, I, I think you're all you, you're kind of used to. Exactly. Our, our fanciness. So, uh, I did see a hand raised. Do we still have a hand raised? Or no? Did that go down? Oh, I guess I went back down. Okay, oh. good. But this is our Q and A session. So, whatever questions you have, please feel free to stick them in the chat. Or, oh no, hand went back up. I don't know who that is. Every by the time I get to it, it goes away. So let's see. They're just playing with me. Y'all just playing with me now. Um, yeah, if you have anything, please feel free to stick it in the, the chat section and we'll... Gina, do you need a reminder about provider profiles? Hopefully everybody's been paying attention. We have a whole bunch sitting and submitted. So um, if you haven't, I would like you to submit your profile by Friday of this week um, for 2425. The biggest thing you have to do is tell me your closure days for the new year for July 1st through June 30th. So I haven't gone in there yet. Um, you'll be hearing from me about um, getting that done, please. So get that in for us. And um, we need that to be able to renew your contracts. Um, and I, there's a lot of you, so I can't tell you exactly who didn't do it, but we will get an email from you if you didn't. So if, you can always go in and check. <laughs> when you go in, it'll default to 24, 25 if it's done, so. Uh, April, I'm opening another VPK room next year. Anything out there to help get curriculum? As of right now, we don't have any other curriculum grants. 
Um, for VBK classrooms, curriculum's not required unless you are a provider on probation that's part of your plan. Um, so you um, can make that selection, but we don't have any grants as of right now for curriculum. But you could use your direct payment to purchase um, curriculum. So we do have two hands raised. I'm watching um, another chat at the same time. So if you see my eyes moving around. So we do have two hands raised. So one is Aileen Soros and one is our own CEO, Mr. Warren Eldridge. So they both have their hands up. So Jamie, you were right. Good catch. I know it keeps like disappearing. Every I, time I look, it like comes back around. Yeah, so yeah. Do you want to unmute any of those for us, Ariel? They had a question. So, and unmute you first. Um, so now all you have to do is just unmute yourself if you're still on. And it's the red microphone button next to your name. And I'm sorry, I know my sound isn't good. My computer sounds like it's about to take off. <laughs> so, um, hey, Mm -hmm. Yes. If you go under attendees, you'll see a little uh, red microphone next to your name. And if you click that, it will unmute you. Yeah. And Aylin, um, you can always type your question in the chat as well. We can always get back to you. Warren, I'll go ahead and unmute you now. Hi. And... I, I didn't want to hear Hi. things that are good news. Um, legislative session just ended over the past, um, I guess, a weekend, week and a half ago. Or, or last week, uh, Palm Beach County came out fairly well. We need to wait for the governor to sign it. However, it will have some impacts on the providers in a good way, I believe, that it's looking, I, I hope everybody's recognized that we've been enrolling children over the past month or two. And from all intents, we look like we'll be enrolling for again, I would imagine the next six to eight months at a minimum. Um, wow maybe not full speed ahead, but we will be enrolling for a while at a minimum. In addition, there will be slight provider rates for child care centers It was set by the state. They've always been slightly below the market rate. And for part-time school-aged children, there may be, assuming everything goes through, a very pleasant surprise for many of the parents that you serve that I know had to pay to make up the difference between what the private pay rate is, because there could be a fairly large increase for private pay, school-aged children. Everything is pending. The signature by the governor was an early session, so that means that we may not know for a little while, but Palm Beach County um, came out very, very, very good. If you know a legislator or you or you know the governor, thank them. Thank Warren, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. They're having trouble hearing you. Um, I don't know if you moved. Can you move closer to the microphone? You were clear at the beginning. Yeah, you were clear at the beginning, and then it kind of went out. Maybe, maybe I'm losing my voice. There we go. There we go. There, there you are. Got you back. Uh, Try I'm, again. <laughs> I'll just say that if you know any any members of the state house or state senators or in, anyone that is associated in Tallahassee, thank them. For the attention they pay to early learning. It looks like this is a year that we might have, that Palm Beach County finally made up some of the challenges. And so I would expect, while not heavy, heavy enrollment, I would expect a constant enrollment at least until December or January of next year in my expectations, probably picking up in, in July. And I would expect, unless something changed dramatically, that there will be a large increase for what we reimburse you for part-time school-aged children, and that was set by the state. So it was a great, it was a great session. It was a good time for our families. Hopefully, it will be a good time for the providers, and um, hopefully, and by families, I mean this year they really focused on first five, which we know are the most important years, but also the school age with the siblings that get up with them. So stay tuned. Um, it just ended. Obviously, nothing's been signed by the governor into law, but first blush is Palm Beach County came out very, very good. And a lot of it is focusing on making sure that we reimburse providers fairly. And the impact, like I said, the impact on birth to five will be minimal. Um, every, 
to, again, it'll be particular on centers, you know, less than a dollar a day, and then for part-time school-age children um, for, for, for centers, and it should be it should be good. But I just really want to thank you if you see anybody out there who comes by your facility, you never know, it's state representative, state senator, just please thank them. They paid attention, paid attention to our issues, our concerns. They didn't pass a bunch of crazy stuff, so they focused on the money, and that's really what we needed. So I just wanted to share the money. I'm sorry, Gina, I didn't give you a heads up, and, Aaron did, and Justin didn't give you a heads up, I was gonna be on, but I figured I, this would be a good chance to share some really good news. And I'll answer any questions. Yes, no, uh, thank you so much. No, uh, you're always welcome, Warren. We're always happy to have you. Um, we did still have some um, volume issues, I think. A couple people weren't able to hear. Um, and I think we were saying that we, if I can just paraphrase a, a second, we were saying we still will have open enrollment, that Palm Beach County did come out ahead with some finance and that we are going to see uh, an increase in um, provider rates, mainly for part-time uh, for aftercare students, right? Is sort of where we were. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will the increase be connected to provider rates? So it is in relation to your provider rate. So when you do that cost of care survey on, on the portal, they're using that information for what you're saying it costs for care of children to then determine um, what we are paying for subsidy. So um, there's a formula Gina, that goes along I, with that. Yeah, if you could. Just yes, no. putting the correct provider rates right. helps immensely. And I'll give you the example of part-time school age children. If everybody would have just put the reimbursement rates that we were reimbursement and not the real private pay rate, we never would have received this bump. But because every one of you were diligent in making sure you recorded the private pay rate, that helped us in, in getting the state to recognize the importance for us to serve families. Did that make it through? Or yes, yes, you're great. better. It's yeah, without breaking up. Yeah, I don't know. It's a whatever it's you were doing or whatever you were saying, it's perfect. So as long I'm as you stay in that I'm spot. I'm about four minutes. I'm about four four inches from the computer. <laughs> from That's the microphone. Right. <laughs> right. That works. Yeah, totally good thing, works. Good thing, good thing the camera is not, it would not be great. <laughs> Um, so Lee did ask, is it the private pay rate that they put on the profile or the cost of care survey? Um, they, one, one ties into the other, but mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you do on, on the provider's part, that you do the profiles correct, because that yeah. is one of the things that the state uses. There's also the cost of care study. And now there, all of those things are supposed to go into calculating the rate at the state level that is a change but it came out to our advantage because of the work that the, our providers have done diligently over the years right. at making sure that they did it correctly and it, and it really helped for this particular age group this year yeah um, we didn't see overarching changes. It was very small. Um, so, so there was a couple of questions for family child care homes. Um, the only one that we saw a really significant increase was for the school age children. Um, and I don't think it affected family child care homes quite as much, but I will have that out to you. Um, and that, rather and, than and I can share the reason that that is, is we've always maintained because it's the family child care can serve so few children. Uh, and we wanted to, we've always tried to maintain as close to market rate for family child care. What the state really tried to do this year is to make it equitable from centers home, regardless as to what type of care, to look at family child care. But, um, but so, so there, there were reasons to this. And the good news for family child care is that we're going to be enrolling for, a, for the foreseeable future. And the foreseeable future could be six months, it could be eight months, it could be 10 months. I'm afraid to tell you how long I think it'll be, but I'm trying to cut it short just for expectations. But for the foreseeable future, we will be enrolling and we will be enrolling at a solid pace, but not heavy, heavy pace to make sure that we're able to enroll it and make this move forward as, as quickly as possible. Wonderful. 
That is good news. I know everyone is always concerned for their family, so it's really good that we'll be able to keep enrolling. Wonderful. Thank you, Warren. And again, sorry about the surprise. No, no. no. I'm surprised I'm here in Port Center today because I had no internet. <laughs> it works out perfectly. Roll with the punches. <laughs> we are not highly scripted. No. Um, I just want to go back and make sure that this question um, was not lost. Someone was asking about uh, smart boards. Oh, yes. Yes. I saw that. Um, so there's yeah. not a specific grant for smart boards, but you are eligible to use your direct payment that you received in February to purchase a smart board for your classroom. Mm -hmm. And same thing, I know we had some sites buying some different trainings. Um, this is a great time, if, you know, if you're interested in a certain training or conference, those direct payments can also be used towards those items. So sure. great, I know a lot of sites did that last year. We were really celebrating, we saw some sites um, did conferences and did some other things beyond our conference, which is awesome. And we know we're gonna see you there beyond our conference. We saw um, some sites do that and that was really awesome. So that's yeah. also, yeah, last year um, we had quite a few sites that came together as a group, and so that was amazing to see, um, you know, just having your own PD day as a team. There were spirit shirts, and so that is something that we took feedback from of you wanted to be able to have some um, prizes around spirit. So be on the lookout for what that can look like and, and how you can participate um as a team um to win those prizes for spirit awards at the conference absolutely absolutely all right i'm just going to stay here and let questions catch up before i jump topics because i know sometimes we jump talk about topics quickly and people are thinking wait a second hold on wait for us to catch up i just want to see if there are any other questions i know that the training calendar is updated on our website. So if you're looking for trainings for April to June, make sure to check that out um, on our website under trainings. Um, a lot of the trainings that we have been offering, like class group coaching training, um, we offered, you know, with for the full six months from January to June, um, but we do have other training series and workshops that are available. Um, we offered our first It's Okay to Play in VPK, which had huge success. Um, oh, nice. So we'll be offering that again in the future. Um, we've also been um, focusing around literacy, um, challenging behaviors, um, as well as class. Um, so just check out what we have available. We'd love to see you um, at some of our trainings for the next quarter. Absolutely. And there's some really great options on there. I was just checking out the calendar. And there's some great stuff. So yeah. you always sign up for those, come to the conference. We can see you in all kinds of places and spaces. So definitely check that out. Um, I am gonna jump topics. This is just a little infomercial for our VPK providers, so SRF only folks, sorry for one moment, and this is very, very small VPK providers, and you will get a follow-up email about this, but just so we can clarify once you receive that email. So in our VPK classrooms for the spring fast, they are adding one question. They're adding that question just to do some calibration and understand how some of those questions could fit in the overall assessment. So right now there's 27 questions. They're adding one more to make 28. So for anyone who is a real eagle eye, you will notice there is one more question. The question will not count. It will not be part of scoring. So if all of a sudden you're wondering what is happening, the test is going to be scored the exact same way. It's just a way to understand maybe adding some other questions down the line and to calibrate. So you may see an additional question. You won't know what question it is. It's like a surprise Easter egg in the VPK assessment. It'll just be an extra in there while they're sorting it out. It does not count in your scoring. You will get an email about it, um, but just for anyone who really is um, detail oriented, if you see an extra, don't worry. It's not changing the assessment or changing the score. I'm just doing a little, a little of their own testing on the back end to understand the assessment, and that's a good thing. We want our companies that do assessments to do that. It's important. It's important they do that work. 
us if there's any questions, let us know. And you will receive an email about that. Gina, I think we have one question, but very specific about e-signing contracts. Um, PowerPoint presentation, ARPA, oh, wait a minute, hang on. on I'm e not able to e-sign the amendment to the VPK and SR contracts. Um, well, we haven't issued any new contracts for the coming year. Do you mean an amendment to the current year contract? Um, and it would be in the portal, so I'm not sure. If you want to reach out to your uh, provider services specialist, they can help you with that process. It may be a matter of selecting your name. You have to be logged in on your account and select your name to be able to sign. The portal is very specific to that. So um, certainly, I think you're with Ch ChildNet, Ms. Marie, um, or yeah, Child's Children's Nest then um, that would be Maureen. She can help you with that. Um, can you please email me the PowerPoint presentation with the ARPA stipend explanation, please? Uh, yeah, we'll find that. Um, I am put, posting it um, in the chat, but we can also, if you go to our website, um, which is elcpalmbeach.org, and you click on providers or for providers and then ARPA, um, all of the ARPA tunities are listed in a red button um, as well as uh, there's a drop down menu on each of the bonuses and stipends um, on um, right below the picture. So everything related to ARPA is on our website. Um, so you're welcome to review that. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out. And so to clarify, go ahead, Erin. Clarify, it is with STAR Literacy, not class. We're not adding questions into class. We won't be asking questions. We won't be quizzing the children. Don't worry, we won't be quizzing the adults. Class is just what it always is. You're just going to do your thing. This will be on the STAR with FAST for your VPK classrooms. That's why I said, sorry, SR providers. I apologize for the small infomercial related to VPK. There will be one extra question on the FAST assessment in the spring. So instead of 27 to 28, they're doing some calibration. That extra question, you won't know which question it is. It's just there for calibration. It won't be part of scoring. We will send a follow-up email. But just, we know some of you are really, really on it. You're like, why is there an extra? Hmm. So just in case you notice, or just calibration doesn't count. And we're not changing anything with class, class is class. Class is class. Class is class. And um, speaking of class, uh, just make sure you're updating your QPS roster as a school readiness provider. That um, requires a monthly um, update. So um, make sure you're logging into QPS to update that for any staff. Um, that's part of the requirement um, um, for your annual assessment. So it's a monthly update in QPS um, verifying your staff roster because we do know staff changes happen. So we want that um, accurate um, for your program assessment. Are there any questions related to um, web author submissions or um, available information about stipends that we can answer. I know a lot of you are reaching out to the point of contact, which is perfect if you, um, you know, for class foundation codes that goes to Jalen, um, for BP sets Maria, for 10 components it's Lena. Um, so to answer Lee's question, um, will ELC be, con be continuing to supply gold assessment to pay for the subscription? Um, we are still uh, trying to determine what is allowed because that's currently funded by CSC. And we know that that um, is ending with Strong Minds ending in September. Um, Will there be another funding like the one in February? I'm assuming you're referring to the direct payment. 
And yes, um, there will be another direct payment um, at the end of June. Um, so stay tuned for that um, once it's available for you to submit your application for the direct payment for June. And Chelsea, that's the last ARPA thing that's rolling out. I know we had different um, portions of ARPA or different little programs or opportunities. I'm going to just keep using that term because I love it. That rolled out this spring, but that is, am I correct, the last one? That will be that last direct payment is the last one. So for those of you um, at your programs waiting to see if there are others, we have rolled out most of the programs as the only one left. Don't worry, we're not going to roll out a training program for people to take training at the beginning of June. We won't be scaring anybody that you have to take training in four days. So those have all come out. But keep in mind, all we're of your staff, staff <laughs> for school readiness <laughs> have to have the two new trainings. <laughs> Yeah, and but you've been, you've been notified. of <laughs> providers using the direct payment that they're receiving and using a portion of that direct payment as a stipend or incentive to their staff to complete those health and safety trainings, which I think is a great use of that funding, just yes, so that, perfect, yeah. you know, if you give them a deadline of like, needs to be done by April 15th and they get a stipend for completing that sooner than later. I think that's a great use of the funds just so that you can check that off the list that everybody on your team um, has completed that required training for school readiness providers. Exactly. So those are online, available to you, free. And Gina has sent out um, those reminders about the health and safety trainings, where to get them, what they are, how many hours they are. Um, so you have all that information. Yep. Send it again. I keep sending. I'm trying to catch everybody. Three T's, provider training stipend. Can we explain three T's? Sure. Um, so we offer the three T's training um, and um, that training is a hybrid training where there's in-person and virtual uh, trainings connected. And if you complete the training in its entirety, then you could submit your certificate for the stipend. Um, based on my last information, the registration for the three T's was full. Um, but there is a waiting list. Um, I believe there's a three T's that is getting ready to start in April. So um, <clears throat> I believe it's full though, but you can always add your name to the wait list through WebAuthor. Tanya, questions are a little bit slower this afternoon. That's the question. Gina, did you already have your VPK webinar? Or is that coming up? Uh, we do a monthly VPK fast webinar. It's always the first Tuesday of the month. So we had ours up. for March. The next one will be in April on um, the, the first Tuesday, which is the second. April 2nd. Yeah. Yes. So, yep, those are have been going well. We have um, usually some sort of tips and tricks. We were asking providers if you wanted to share any of the writing stations or what you're doing at your program um, with us. We're happy to highlight all of the really great work you're doing and showing how kids are learning um, and getting prepared for kindergarten. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet, but if you're happy, I'm happy to accept any any shares of pictures or. Um, little videos of what you have going on at your site and we'll highlight those at our next webinar. And then we'll have one last one at the beginning of May and then we'll be done for now. Um, we are looking for some summer VPK providers. I have a short list of sites of people that would are potentially interested in offering summer VPK. So we'll communicate out with them. Um, it will be fast and furious this summer, of course, but um, we, uh, won't probably do VPK fast webinars over the summer. It'll it'll be a little bit harder because it's a much smaller group. So we'll start them up again in August.
So we have two left, April and May. Okay, it's just quiet, quiet today, other than at my house. I don't know if people downstairs want to close prizes. I don't know what is going on, <laughs> so if you hear noise, I'm so sorry. Um, Andrea, so what about the stipend for class environment um, and coaching stipend? So um, all of the project-based um, uh, ARPA stipends, the application had closed in January. So at this, um, so that was open and then had to close just based on limited availability. So if you did not apply for it within that window, um, it's um, you're not eligible at this at this point. So Lee, we know that there is that programming that's rolling out um, that a large part of that was charged with districts that was summer bridge program for um, children who needed it. We don't have any details yet if there will be an option for providers to participate in that program? That's a great question. Um, we can certainly check into that. We don't have a lot of details on what that's going to look like yet, but great question and we can follow up on that. And we have a question coming in. I'm gonna jump back from Lee's question. The staff, so if we have a staff that left the program but they were rehired in November, they qualify for recruitment bonus. So I think it was someone existing there who then came back to that program. So they left in August and rehired in November. Right. Um, that VP for a VPK retention bonus, we had said October to April. Or is she talking about new hire? Yeah, I'm not sure. Abby, if you want to clarify, is that for a VPK or a new hire bonus? And Andrea, we didn't have our inspection until last, which inspection, like your class assessment or a licensing inspection? Oh, for new hired. So if you hired them for the new hire bonus, as long as they've worked 120 hours, um, you can do the new hire bonus uh, bonus application. So like you can't hire them today or have them start today and be like, I want my bonus application. Yeah, they have to actually have worked 120 hours. Oh, class, um, assessment. class assessment. Um, for class environment, it um, it it had, it, you didn't have to have a, a recent. It could have been based on your, just whatever your last class assessment was. Um, for um, the class score incentive um, bonus, you could, now that you've received your class assessment, um, if you increased by 0.5 or received a score above a five, um, you're eligible for the class score incentive bonus for all of your staff, so you can submit for that. Um, if you're a VPK only provider, you use your VPK score. If you're a school readiness provider, you use your school readiness score. Polar, if you still haven't been assessed yet for school readiness, you need to wait for your school readiness assessment for the fiscal year 23-24 in order for you to submit your class score incentive bonus. So um, it has to be based on this year's score. And this year's assessments run from July to June. So if you have already been assessed, um, you can submit if you had a 0.5 increase or in or maintained your five or above or scored five or higher um, you are eligible for that class score incentive for your staff so Pilar you have to be patient <laughs> and wait for that um, the center was sold sorry Pilar um, if a center was sold, are the retained staff eligible for new hire bonuses? Gina? <laughs> I won't say no. I've seen them come through. It's up to you. That's how you submit. 
Um, for the class score, is it for the teacher or for the staff and teacher? Um, so for family child care sites, it's the you're listed as the instructional director. Um, so you are eligible as an instructional director to receive that class score incentive. If you are a large family child care, then you do have staff, so you can include um, the teachers that were assessed during um, the observation. And then if you're as a center, then it's um, based on who you have listed in your QPS roster as a school readiness provider. And then if you're VPK only, it's your VPK staff. And that is, that is, that is, I'm looking on the website. Um, that is all the process for, um, like the eligibility for the class score incentive bonus um, is on our website under ARPA bonus and stipend applications. If you click the drop down class score incentive, you can click and a PDF will open up on the eligibility for that. that if you already took the M took MMCI for infants and toddlers, can you take pre-K MMCI? You can. Uh, I I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because a lot of the information is similar. Um, if you're trying to get two stipends, you're only eligible for one stipend. So if you if you get the stipend for infant toddler, you can't get the stipend for pre-K. Um, for the which is MMCI is now known as class group coaching training. Um, those trainings are full. So if you're not already in it, um, you, at this point, it would be the wait list. We only have one more that's starting up in April um, that I'm really excited about because it's a combo teaching, combo trainer, myself, Ruth Lawson, um, and Adriana Chapa, we're sharing that training. Uh, the three of us are teaching it. So we each take a month uh, to teach, which I'm excited about kind of sharing that experience. You get a variety of us. Um, so that is the last one um, before June. So if you already took it at this point, you would have to wait if you're not on our list. They became very popular. When you attach a stipend, you all come, which is great. We love which having you in class. And we love doing the stipends. We know that it's your carving time out of your schedules, um, from your work time, your, you know, your all the other hats you wear time. So um, we're really glad we can do that. And we're glad they, those filled because they seem to be um, so helpful with class. So. I mean, it's say, a big commitment. MCI, um, because sometimes I still, I still say it too, it's a class group coaching. I will get there. I'll get there. All right. I think we answered everything, everyone. I think we got everything. Um, class score incentive bonus application. Do we have to submit an application for each employee separately? Yes. Yes. You have to go in and do each one. The training for the three, three T's. T's. I'm so glad. That's, That's great. Today. A great training. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, there will be more class group coaching uh, training scheduled by uh, late summer. So we tend to, because of just um, people traveling in the summer, it's hard to maintain that attendance. So we'll probably start end of July, beginning of August for CGCs um, for, early, did I say late summer? Yes, late summer, early fall, because it runs for three months. So it's a 12 week course. It's a big commitment. Step oh my okay, fast monthly meetings to the invites. Um, that's me, Stephanie. I will add you on there. I 
been doing it to my VPK list. So I'll check web author and make sure that you didn't get bumped off or um, weren't included. So I'll make sure you're in there, Stephanie, my apologies. And are they on um, the training calendar? Uh, they are in the training calendar. They are in LMS and um, their Teams webinars. Um, and then we, if you miss it, we do post the video on YouTube. And then I try to, yeah, and then we email them out afterwards with the attachments and stuff. So um, if you're missing it, I, it's got to be an email issue because we, I email those a lot. And, and like I said, they live on our YouTube page as well. So I'll check for you, Stephanie, and make sure. And so the VPK Fast Monthly webinars are on YouTube. These are on YouTube. So if you miss any part of this excitement, um, by all means, log in. You can go back in the Wayback Files. Eventually, we are going to clean out some of the old ones um, that go way back in the pandemic just because the information is kind of old. Um, my hairdo was kind of bad. So we're going to start removing some of those just to clean up our YouTube channel. So if you want the ones from like 2021. I don't know. I was looking a lot younger back then, so I don't know. How that's that's going. Cool. I did think about Gina. I did look younger. I had weird hair, but I did look younger. So I can see that. Yeah. We need like filters. I think we need like a filter. Thing too, so. Some of those filters are a little scary. Doesn't yeah. Mean? Well, this is not a very flattering light in here. That's for sure. Oh, wonderful. So we hit two o'clock. Any other last minute? I know we were slow to get going today. I apologize for that, but thank you so much for hanging on with us. Um, any other questions we can answer for you? Please let us know. If you didn't do your profile yet, please get that out. Um, do you know when the payment will come out for ARPA? So we did release um, the payments for bonuses for staff on Monday. So you should see um, those payments if you have direct deposit in your account or if you're um, waiting on a check that's coming to you, but the payment report is in the provider portal in the monthly reimbursement report folder on which staff were paid. Um, I believe we paid bonuses that were submitted up through March 8th. So if anyone had been processed after March 8th, that one has not been paid yet. So give us another couple of weeks and those will be coming out again um, and you'll get a payment report for those. Please check that report to see who you should be paying because you've applied for them and you do have an, that $35 processing payment um, was made on each bonus you applied for. So that's to offset your costs for paying the staff the bonuses. If you have any issues with anyone, please let us know, um, but you are obligated to, to pay them those bonuses if you applied for them. So um, let us know if you don't see that, but Jackie, you should see that payment report um, for anybody that was approved before March 8th. I think I'm going to be in somebody's meeting, so I think we have to end this one. <laughs> Lark has amassed a group here that I need to leave. <laughs> so, Karen, I'll just answer your question. We still have Aspire going, um, and we are still taking groups. It just depends on how things are processed for reimbursements for those to come back to you as case by case. So if you have questions, just you can contact Darian, and she can let you know. But Aspire is still going. Um, Gina, we know you got to hop to something else. Everyone enjoy the rest of your spring break and we will see you in a few weeks. We'll be back. We'll be back. Have a great you afternoon. Enjoy everybody. the rest of the week. Bye. Enjoy. Bye. Bye.